Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Circuit Hub. So today we are going to understand about the SEPI converter design and simulation in Alta Spice. Okay, we will understand what is the SEPI converter and how will you design the SEPI converter in Alta Spice? How will you simulate the SEPI converter in Alta Spice? What is the different voltage and current wave form of SEPI converter? Right. So in the last video, we have understood about the non-inverting buck boost converter. And in this video, we, we are going to understand about the SEPI converter. And we will also understand what is the difference between SEPI converter and buck boost converter. Right. So let us understand first what is the SEPI converter. Before I explain this circuit, I wanna explain you about the what is the SEPI converter, right? So look at this. I wrote some key point which need to understand. So I wrote some point about the SEPI converter. So basically, what is the full form of SEPIC SEPI converter? So SEPI converter is basically a single-ended primary inductor converter okay and it is a kind of it is a type of buck boost converter okay so in the sepi converter the dc output is greater than or less than or equal to its dc input voltage okay so this is this is the most important point in the sepi converter dc output is greater than less than or equal to its dc input voltage the major advantage of a SEPI converter is that its output voltage has the same polarity as that of input voltage. All the current from the source to load has to go through the C1 capacitor. I'll explain, I'll show you about this capacitor. Go through the C1 capacitor or capacitor, thus a capacitor of high capacitance and high current handling capability is required since the voltage across the capacitor c1 reverses for every cycle it should be of a non-polarized capacitor okay so so basically this is the this is the advantage and disadvantage of the cp converter one more disadvantage of the sepi converter is it uses two inductor if you see l2 and if you see l3 so it uses two inductor and i was talking about this capacitor okay since the load current has to be flow with this capacitor c2 so it's very heavy i you say bulky expensive and it should able to withstand the high current okay and it should be non polarized so this this capacitor plays a vital role in the SEPI converter, right? So now let us understand the circuit flow of SEPI converter, right? And then I'll run the simulation and I'll show you the different waveform. Okay. So let us first understand. This is your input voltage. Then I have connected one capacitor, filter capacitor C1. And if you see, then I have connected L2. This is the inductor with the value of 10 micro henry and this is the switch okay and i i'm driving this switch uh, if you see r2 i've connected 5 ohm resistance in order to limit the current of the gate okay and i'm driving the switch with 500 kilohertz frequency with the amplitude of 10 volt okay so this is 10 volt and the frequency is 500 kilohertz right then again at this point at the drain of your mosfet m2 we have one capacitor c3 and at this point we have the again one inductor that is connected to the ground and we need here a high frequency diode switching diode then we have again the secondary filter, the capacitor and the load. So the load is 1 ampere when the duty cycle is 0.5, right? And this is the theoretical voltage source I have calculated. If you remember the DC transfer function of your SEPI converter, that is V out equals to V in multiply by D divided by 1 minus D, 
okay so i'll compare the theoretical calculated value with your converter output and i'll show you whether both output are matching or not okay so this is all about the cp converter if you see the components source then filter capacitor l2 then you have one mosfet mosfet gate driver this capacitor c3 l1 then this high frequency diode again output capacitor and the load okay so now i'm gonna run the simulation and i'll show you the output of the sapic converter so let us let us start with the with the duty cycle of 0.5 and let us see okay so now your duty cycle is 0.5 and i am running this sapic converter with the frequency of 500 kilohertz your input is 12 volt and i am running this sapi converter with the frequency of 500 kilohertz let us see what happens okay so i'll divide this into the tile and let me show you the first output voltage so your output voltage is 12 volt and let me show you the gate signal okay so this is basically your gate signal and i'll hold this simulation here and i'll show you the gate signal right so it's still running yeah wingo so this is your gate signal so if you see this this is the 500 kilohertz frequency and then the gate vgs equals to 10 volt now i'm gonna show you the that here let me delete this okay so delete this and delete this also let me show you the drain to source voltage so this is the drain to source voltage wherein you see your 0 to 2 25 26 around so your drain to source voltage is almost double of your input voltage that's the beauty you see your drain to source voltage is the the double of your input voltage here i see 25.74 and let me show you the inductor current and this is the inductor current if you look at here as the ripple current it's starting from 0.7 to to 1.9 so this is basically your inductor current and let me show you this capacitor current okay so let me divide some plot pane so that you can understand better okay so i'll put il here okay let me show you the voltage across this inductor how it looks like okay so you see the voltage across l2 is 12 volt but the voltage across this MOSFET, the voltage across this MOSFET is, the switch is 25.7 volt. That means you are getting double of your input voltage. Now, so you have seen this is inductor current and this is the current, this is inductor voltage. Now I'm gonna show you about the here, the capacitor C3 current. So this is basically your capacitor current and let me show you the voltage across this capacitor. So C3, so this is basically a voltage across capacitor C3. If you look at this looks like that. And now let me show you the inductor current again, this inductor current. And let me show you the voltage across this inductor, how it looks like. So voltage across this inductor is is minus 11 to minus 11 to 13.65 okay now this is the diode current that is how it looks like and finally i'm going to show you the output voltage so i'll delete this plot pane this also i'll delete so delete this and let me show you the output voltage so this is your output voltage so it has to be like that and i should press here so that you can see your output voltage this is your output voltage guys and let me show you the output current so this is your output current so for now uh, my duty cycle is 0.5 and let me delete this so output current is 1.1 amps let me for the moment let me delete the output current if you look at the output voltage if your duty cycle is 0.5 it is showing 13.29 and let me show you the theoretical value so your theoretical value is is 11 point is 12 but you see here it's 13.24 there is some losses i don't understand why but it's still if you see compare both 
results you see your converter result is closer to your theoretical result and if you want to see the ripple voltage output ripple voltage you can see that is how your converter looks like and this is your output ripple voltage ripple voltage of your converter okay so now i'm going to change the duty cycle and from 0.5 to i'll put 0.3 okay and i'm i'll run the simulation again so now you can see your your theoretical result and the converter result i'm going to hold this simulation okay your theoretical result is 5.15 and your simulation result if i say is 5.73 so you see your both result are very closer now i'm going to change the duty cycle 0.3 to 0.8 let us see what happens guys okay so let me run the simulation again and let's see what is happening at this moment if you change the duty cycle from 0.3 to 0.8 what is gonna happen so let me hold the simulation if you change the duty from 0.8 0.3 to 0.8 so at the moment we have 0.8 duty and if i see the theoretical result it is 47.8 and if i see the converter result it's a 54.9 here see I, I see big difference i don't know why but i see big difference here you are seeing 48 volt but here you can see it's a 50 around 55 volts which is very higher than this let me further reduce to 0.7 to 0.7 let us see if they are coming closer okay now the simulation is running and i think it has got the steady state so let me hold the simulation and this is again 50, how much this is 28 and this is again 31 so there is some difference right there is some difference now what i'm gonna do is i'll delete the theoretical waveform and i'm gonna show you maybe the how i can show this i wanted to show you the fft analysis so view so go at view then fft analysis and look at the out fft of output voltage click ok so this is now the fft of your converter and if you look at this point this is your this is your fundamental frequency and i see exactly it's 500 500 around 500 kilohertz if you look at your fundamental frequency this is your fundamental frequency if you look if you do the fft analysis frequency response analysis and if you look at this point this is your the fundamental frequency i see and it has the peak amplitude of 30 minus 34 db so what you can do is you can uh, connect some output volt filter let's say for the pi filter here uh, at the output after the diode you can use one inductor and one more capacitor and if you are you can do that you you may be able to see this you, you can lower down this peak okay so hope guys you have understood about the CPIC converter if you have any further question feel free to ask me in comment section thanks for watching this video